Hello and welcome to HCG Corporate Designs. This video is about white space in editorial design. What I mean with white space? Literally the white, empty space between graphics, pictures and text. Let me show you some examples. This is a fabric catalog I did 2013-2014 for a German company. You can see a lot of white space here, a lot of white space here and here. The center of attention is always here. You can see the so-called Kraftlinie in German, I think that's power line in, in English, that uh, allows for easy orientation on the headline. And then the Felgentilt Men magazine in Germany that I did about two years ago. A lot of white space, slanted uh, photos to give it more power and strength and dynamics. Then a magazine from the Chamber of Commerce in Austria, a lot of white space at the top. The architecture magazine I did about three or four years ago with a very innovative table of contents. The focus is really on the center bar, I would say, on the photos. You have an easy orientation with the color bars and a lot of white space. So this should transport a feel of uh, a, a light, open, breathing architecture loft, so to speak, which is perfect for an architecture magazine. Down days. They also work with a very much white space in very nice areas. Here is only on the, on the outside. So this white space also gives a lot of authority and credibility to the pictures. The pictures look stronger when there is a lot of white space around them. Also here another example of white space. As you can see, white space is an important design element. It's often underestimated, but it has become more and more prominent over the past few years. And I think this is a very good thing. The great thing about white space, it gives the content much more room to breathe. White space gives the content more power, more strength, more weight, even more credibility, if you wish. And the readers have a much more pleasant reading experience because they don't have to go through cluttered pages, cluttered with a lot of text and pictures without any break, which is the white space. And you can uh, place certain focus points. You can really, with white space, steer the reading flow and navigate your readers nicely through your publication. Working with white space requires guts. There are still people out there who consider white space as a useless waste of space. So you really have to be brave and have the guts to give your content more space to breathe. Working with white space can cost some extra money because you have a certain amount of text and pictures that you have to place. But if you want to include some white space, you have less space available for text and pictures. So either you, um, decrease the amount of your content or you simply spend a little bit more in the printing process with paper and more on postage. What is very important in print editorial designs, you have to have very good paper with very good opacity, meaning your paper has to be dense enough that the text from the back side doesn't shine through on the front side so you destroy the white space on the front side. You need a good grid and some sort of structure, concept of how and where to use white space. Because leaving something blank here, leaving something blank there, looks more like an accident rather than professional editorial design. So having a structure is really a good idea when using white space. I hope this video encouraged you to use more white space in your publications. If you have any questions or you are in need of an editorial designer yourself, simply send me an email to office at hcg dash corporate dash designs.com and I'm happy to help. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time.